Hello friends and welcome new subscribers. Today we're going to continue the cutting compound series. We're going to take a close look at NanoSkin Speed Cut. We're going to see if it breaks on to our podium. So the first video here we're going to use it on a test panel and then we're going to take it out into the shop following that and do some real world work. So we're going to see if it breaks on to our podium and what we have so far, and, and this is the order that I have it in my environment, this may change slightly for you, but these are all excellent compounds. For me, I have Sonax Cut Max in the top spot. Very close second, Angel Wax Resurrection. We have the Grios Garage from the Boss System. And honorable mention goes to Jezcar 3D HD Cut Plus. Car Pro of the last cut, and the biggest surprise for me was Wizards, and we took a look at that out in the shop doing some real world work as well, and it did just fine. So, without further hesitation, let's take a close look at NanoSkin Speed Cut. The Nano Skin Speed Cut is 16 ounces for $15, a great price, which is common for Nano Skin. When it comes to the product line, it's hit or miss for me, 50-50. I pretty much love half the line and could care less about the other half. The Nano Skin Speed Cut is a quick cutting compound made for all clear cuts, hard or soft, and even scratch resistant. The compound was formulated for the MicroBuff system. They have their own system as well cutting pads, polisher, and now this polish. It's able to remove 1200 grit sand marks or higher. When it comes to the diminishing abrasives, I put a little bit of the product on the panel here and spread it out. You can see the abrasives and I can also feel them between my fingers. Now, who knows, but for the most part, when I can see them and feel them, it's gonna leave some dusting behind. We're gonna test that thoroughly here on a panel and also out in the shop. It's not always the case that we find some dusting when abrasives are apparent in the compound, but it has happened in a large portion of the compounds we have tested. I really hope that dusting is absent from this compound. The dusting and residue really drives me nuts to begin with, so it's a huge part of compounds that I choose. So just a quick overview for those just tuning in or new subscribers. For the test here, we section off five little areas where we're going to put different grit sand marks in each section, starting with 2,500, working our way all the way down to 800 grit. Now, the 800 grit section, a lot of compounds aren't designed to remove such damage, but uh, a lot of them tail off in the 1,000 grit section, and it's really fun to see how far these compounds get. Uh, we also look and see if the compounds dust, is the residue easy to wipe off the panel after it's spent? And we look and see after we wipe off the residue how good, how deep, how quick the compound has cut. Okay, so I'm just going to clean off the residue quickly. We'll remove the masking tape and we'll get started with the test. Everything is exactly the same. We have the same 3-inch Flex XFE polisher. We have the same run-of-the-mill orange foam cutting pads. We're going to put three dots of product on the pad, spread it as evenly as we can across all the sections, and we're going to get started here. We're going to run a path all the way down through all the sections and back. Slow our movement, just like we would have if we're correcting on a panel. We have it mid-speed. I'm not putting a ton of pressure on the polisher, just my thumb is pressing down pressure onto the top of the polisher. Two main reasons I use the Flex 3-inch polisher here. Number one, a lot of the panels I have just aren't big enough to use a rotary or a long throw polisher. And the second reason, I don't want to use the aggression from those types of polishers, a long throw or a rotary. I want to put all the work on the shoulders of the compound, not a polisher or a pad itself, so we can see what it really does. And by the way, all test panels are painted, coated with the exact same clear coat, Pittsburgh paint and glass.
Okay, let's shut down the machine, put it aside. Let me grab the camera. Wiping off the residue from the speed cut was easy, effortless. That's good, that's a good start. No dusting. And we're gonna get a closer look at that, by the way, in the next video coming up, when we take the compound out into the shop, do some real world work, again, on black paint. All right, so let's inspect how the speed cut cut through all these sections. And it blazed through the first few sections, as a lot of them have. And when it comes to the 1000 grit section, that's where a lot of the compounds tail off. Well, the speed cut did rather well, um, actually performing as a lot of the top compounds did on our podium. It uh, finishes down rather well. I'm going to get a different angle for that. But when we get down to the 800 grit section, which a lot of compounds really aren't designed to correct, a really great attempt, um, really impressive. And we're going to test this a little bit further in the next portion here. But uh, so far, so good. I tried to get a good angle using the light, but as you can see, no holograms, no hazing. It did a good job finishing down as well as cutting. That angle there shows just how well it performed in the 800 grit section. So let's move on to the next portion of the testing, which is where we test the product once again on the 800 grit and the 1000 grit sections alone. We test for the cycle time or open time, and that means how long you can work the products before the abrasives that are included are diminished and break down completely. We also test and see just how much of the sanding marks are removed. We also test for dusting once again and how easier it is uh, to remove the residue after working the product for a longer period of time, building up a little bit more heat with that foam pad. All right, that's gonna do it. Crisscross pattern. So let's see how the residue wipes off. And I did notice after an extended working time and building up a little bit more heat, the residue was a little bit harder to wipe off. No big deal. Let's see what happened underneath that residue. And as you will be able to see here, it performed very well in both sections, removing even more of that damage. And uh, this is quite impressive. You combine that with the price of the product um, we're going to see what happens on the podium when we move on to final thoughts. Once again, if you use the overhead light there, no hazing, no holograms. It finishes down rather far for a cutting compound. Before we move on to final thoughts, NanoSkin likes to include their patented sealant into a lot of their products. So we're going to see if there's any fillers, silicone, or their sealant in the compound itself. We're going to use an IP wipe and make sure that the sanding marks or the imperfections were not masked instead of removed. Both sections look the same. Nothing has changed. The compound has done a great job. Very impressive.
Okay, gang, again, that was Nanoskin Speed Cut. It did excellent in the initial testing there on a test panel, but we're not done. We're going to take it out into the shop. We're going to do some real world work. When it comes to the podium, there it's been quite stagnant for the last few weeks, and we do actually have some movement finally. Sonax Cut Max will stay at the top spot with Angel Wax a very close second in silver, but when it comes to bronze, we're going to have Nanoskin Speed Cut sliding in there, pushing Griot's Garage down into the honorable mention section, which is really not a knock on the compound. All of these are excellent compounds, and Wizards is still the biggest surprise for me. So, I will see you guys in the next video that is going to shortly follow. We're going to take it out into the shop. We have a car prepped, ready to go, and let's put it to work.